This is the Soulfully Casual Podcast hosted by Matty Ice. And now, your host, Matty Ice. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another installment of the Soulfully Casual Podcast brought to you by Matty Ice Media. As always, I'm your host, Matty Ice, and I want to be very uh, transparent and upfront that uh, this is a very somber episode. This is going to be one that's a little bit tough for me to get through. Um, as many of you know at this point, I've, I've mentioned in previous episodes, but for those of you who are new, um, I generally tend to do my recording before they hit the airways. Um, it's easier for me to record something over a weekend or you know the night before and uh, publish it. Uh, you know, s- s- excuse me, schedule it to publish um, for whenever I need it to go live. Uh, all my episodes are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and so at when I was looking for something to do for this Friday's episode, which you're now hearing on Friday, something had recently come to my attention over the weekend, and the feelings um, for me are very raw. They're very um, genuine, and I needed to sort of get things off my chest and speak to something that I recently found out about um, a portion of my life that is now long gone. Uh, over the weekend, I was reminded of somebody that I went to high school with. Uh, for those of you who, who do not know me, um, I went to a Catholic high school in Providence, Rhode Island. Being from the town of Bristol, Rhode Island, the Bristol and Warren towns are right next to each other. And there was a small group of us that went to the particular school that I went to. I think it was inevitable that you make friends. And I found out that a past friend of mine from high school, uh, her name was Jenny Fries. I knew her as Jenny Prue, uh, passed away on November 20th, 2020, the day before Thanksgiving, she finally succumbed to her her battle with cancer. She unfortunately um, was battling mantle cell lymphoma, which is a non-Hodgkin's form of lymphoma. Um, You know, over the years, I think it's inevitable that you, you know, grow old um, and, and sort of grow away from certain people from your past. We see so many people throughout our lifetime that it's impossible to stay connected with all of them. You know, there are friends in which we have for short periods of time, long periods of time. And, um, you know, some people come through our lives in cycles. They are there for a reason. When I went to high school, uh, you know, I was not the man I am today speaking to you in the microphone. Uh, I was very much lost, trying to figure out who I was, trying to establish, construct the confidence that you hear today on the airwaves. Um, you know, I went through a lot of growing pains emotionally, divorced parents, uh, not really sure who I was. And I was fortunate to have people that I went to school with from the town that I went to, um, from, excuse me, from the town that I lived in, uh, who went to the same school that I did, uh, be, befriend me in a way that I never really forgot. Um, Jenny was one of those people. Jenny was nice to everybody. She was kind. Um, I can still, you know, remember talking with her all the time on the bus on the way there because she was a year behind me. Um, she showed grace and humility in a time when most young people don't do that. And I remembered that about her. Um, the last time that I physically saw Jenny was, um, 2002. It was the lone time that I returned physically to the high school that I went to as a freshman in college. Uh, she was a senior at the time. She was a year behind me and I saw her and, you know, we spoke and it was nice to see her. Um, we had chatted over uh, Instant Messenger, but, um, you know, she told me about the updates in her life where she was going to college and and how happy she was. And it was nice to see her. And, you know, that interaction, I remember that so vividly now, but those interactions that you have throughout your life don't necessarily come at you uh, or stay with you uh, throughout that whole process. As I went through college, um, I grew away from my past. I grew away from the New England roots that I had always had. Um, it was just the, the destiny of my life. It was the, the path in which I chose and really the path that I think that I was meant for. And so over the years, as technology you know, grew, social media became more and more present in our life. And I, I lament about it at times, but in a way, it's allowed us to stay connected with certain people. Um, for me, you know, I, I would think of people from time to time. And I would be able to look them up on social media, whether it was Facebook, Instagram, or what have you. Um, 
back in 2014 or 2015 around that time i think i had thought of jenny for some reason you know something reminded me of her or, um as, as all as tends to happen you have you know, times where you are nostalgic for, for past times and you think about old people you know that were in your life at one point or another and i looked her up and i had read that she had been diagnosed with this uh, form of lymphoma at age 30. she was a, a wife uh, mother of two at the time and i just felt so horrible for her because to think about being age 30 and being forced with um or faced with such a finite um you know, prognosis, I guess, if you want to call it that diagnosis, you know, I'm, I'm sure it was scary. And I myself, having gone through, you know, a, a life changing experience with a heart attack, I could only imagine what she was going through. Um, at the time, I, I didn't reach out. I, I hadn't spoken with her in so long, I didn't know if it was my place to reach out, you know, like, I think sometimes we go through that where we feel like a, I don't want to say a jackass, but sometimes I think we feel as if, you know, we are the ones that are at fault for this lack of connection with people. So I never said anything. Um, I never wished her well. I mean, I wished her well in my own mind, but I never wished her well um, through words, through through some type of a message. And over the years, I continued to look her up because I wanted to know how things were going. And I think in the back of my mind, I always knew that the diagnosis that she had, that eventually uh, she would succumb to it. But I think thinking about her age, thinking about my age, you know, I figured it was, um, you know, it was going to be a long time away. Um, in looking back at her life, you know, reading through the obituaries, reading through the stories, reading through the countless tributes that have been had since that day that she died, um, it turns out that Jenny battled this disease three times. Uh, she was in remission two different times, and this last time she was diagnosed in October of 2020 and was unfortunately uh, gone from us six weeks later. Uh, also come to find out that her mother had passed away, I believe, from cancer as well in June of 2019. And looking back at her Instagram page, which is public, um, that was something that really hit Jenny hard. You know, we so much, so many of us have different relationships with our parents, but I do remember that Jenny was very close with her mom. Um, and so this this all hit me very hard. Uh, but seeing the tributes, seeing everything. Um, it, it let me know that Jenny grew into a woman who was very much the same as the way she was in high school. She showed an, a, an immense amount of grace um, and, and bravery through what she dealt with. Um, she was a fantastic mother to her kids, a beacon for the community, uh, and just seemingly an overall good person. And that's the person that I remember. But, you know, Jenny's passing, as sad as it is, it gets me thinking about this concept of time. Um, you know, we've been in a pandemic now for about a year. Uh, my son turns one years old on March 6th, almost a year ago. And I think about how much has changed in that year. I think about how I've changed in that year. And a year in the, um, you know, the, the totality of our life is such a small amount when you really think about it. But so much can change in that time. And when I think about the fact that I haven't seen Jenny in 20 years, Think about how much changes in that time, but also think about how many people you come in contact with over that time period, how many possible connections lost or how many possible connections forged. And it just gets me thinking about that, that the person that I was 20 years ago is nowhere near the person that I am now. And then when I think about where I ended up and Jenny ended up, she ended up in our hometown. I ended up away from our hometown. It was just the way that our lives were destined to be things happen for a reason and so over the last few days i've really thought a lot about what it means to be connected to somebody to have memories of somebody and that just because you haven't connected with them in a long time or just because you lost some sort of uh, sense of connection doesn't necessarily mean that that connection is, is lost on both fronts I would like to think that over the years, the um, few times that Jenny and I hung out, you know, I, I remember specifically taking her as a friend to a um, rendition of the Christmas Carol one one Christmas, and I know she she loved Christmas, um, and it was not really a date per se, um, but it was just she was somebody who I could take. It was like a friend, um, and she loved it. We had a great time, and I just remember those conversations on the bus. I remember. 
you know, that trip to see a Christmas carol at uh, Providence Performing Arts Center. I remember all the conversations we had over instant messenger while we were in college, checking in on each other every now and again. And again, we weren't close friends the way that many of the people in her life were to her. Certainly not. And I don't want to pretend that is true. Um, but for a short period of my life, she was a person that I had somewhat of a connection with in some fashion. And I think things happen for a reason. And people come into our life and leave our life for many different reasons. And I think we go through our daily motions and don't really sit down and think about the whys behind it. Why is somebody only in their life for a few years? Why are some people in our lives for our entire life? And there are people who are with us for our entire lives who we don't necessarily have great communication with. I'm not very good at the long distance communication game. Um, my best friend lives in Georgia, he and his wife and his three kids, and I wish that I talked to him more. Um, I'm terrible at it. And, you know, thinking about Jenny's passing, it makes me think about how I want to be better at it. And it, it gets me thinking about all the connections in my life. The 38 years that I have been fortunate enough to be alive. I think for the most part, you take for granted how many people you meet, how many conversations you have, how many moments uh, in time that you have that can't be frozen. Time is not something that we have any control over. It just is. It happens. And all we can do is make the best of that time, right? Like there's there's nothing else that we can do. I can't go back in time and wish Jenny well throughout her cancer diagnosis and treatment. I can't go back and message her to say that I'm sorry that we lost touch, that I never kept in touch, that, you know, my life took me in places that distracted me from my home, that just that distance me from who I was growing up. But I want to say this, um, there's always time, right? There's always time to take back the time that you have in front of you. You can't take the time that you had behind you. It just doesn't happen that way. And that's, what, that's why we have to look toward our, our future and look toward the now and what we have in our lives now. Um, probably many of you listening are thinking of somebody who you've lost, whether it's a family member, a parent, or even a friend in this case that you haven't seen for so long, but for some reason that lost hit that loss hits you in a way that is sort of surprising. Like I think when I looked up Jenny the other night on my phone while my son was sleeping on me right before his bedtime, I was expecting to see an update on where she was, that she was in remission, or if she was still battling, that she was still battling. Because over the course of that six years that she battled this, um, she was always positive, always positive, genuine, right? Like she would say when she was scared, um, she would say the times in which she was not feeling well, but she was always so positive, always looking toward the future, always looking toward the best of outcomes. And to see that in six short weeks after six long years of battling it, it just, it took her so quickly, um, you know, with her father, and her husband at her side. And I can only imagine how that feels. And I say I can only imagine because I can't imagine. I can't imagine losing a spouse at such a young age. I can't imagine young kids losing their mother, especially some a mother who was so involved in their life and so involved in their sense of community. And I talked about community last week. I can only imagine how that feels. Or her father, who not only lost his ex-wife, um, the mother of his his children but um, loses his daughter and they always say that the worst thing is a parent burying their child and I feel for them I feel for that family I feel for this the community that lost her the the towns of Bristol and Warren who paid tribute to her by putting ribbons on the main road between the two towns the the tons and tons of tributes the community helping out her husband and kids decorating for Christmas um, the business that she started through all of this, you know, pouring money at it, her husband continuing that tradition. Um, you see these things and it's inspiring and it makes you remember that these connections are so important that every person that you talk to, whether it's a client, whether it's an acquaintance at a party or somebody you meet through a friend, that person has a chance to make an indelible impression on your life. 
and oh you have to always be open to it you can't necessarily think that this person is not capable of changing your life um jenny sort of did that for me she was somebody who i look back on high school and i should be fully transparent i don't look on high school as the best time of my life i think i have one connection point to high school at this point i went to a school with a class of over 300 people and i think i talked to one of them and i actually sent her a text message today when i you know was processing this news and just said i know that you i mean i know that she knew about this but i just said you know you're you tether me to my high school years and while they're not a time period that i look back on fondly um, they were necessary to get me to this place every path that we take is necessary to get us to wherever it is we are sitting today and for me sitting in front of this microphone speaking to you all um, i needed to go through every single uh, hardship every single bit of positivity every life path to get here and jenny went her own way she went on the path that she in inevitably went on and found herself happiness community um you know just success um i would say peace and while the last six l years of her life weren't necessarily the best in terms of what she had to go through i think she probably passed into the next world wherever that is um knowing that she was loved and and knowing that her, the people around her knew that she loved them it's so powerful it's so powerful to think that you can die at peace knowing that everything in your life is set and that the people that you leave are going to be okay and i know that for a fact so um i'm gonna do something that i don't excuse me don't normally do um, i'm going to play the episode out with a song this is a song that was big when i went to high school um and it it dawned on me that this was the song that i needed to play because it's about moments in time about freezing those moments in time and about knowing that tomorrow is going to come no matter what we can't stop tomorrow from coming but what we can do is look back on the time that we've lived and cherish it remember why it got us to where we are and look toward the future and do what we can to live every moment to the fullest it's never easy folks it's never easy because every day something challenges us something comes up that you know sets us on a different path the last year has distracted us with everything that's going on in the world but through all of it we're all human beings we all have ways to connect with each other and in the end the time that we have and the way that we use it is what we have control over so jenny wherever you are if you are listening to this i hope that you and your mom are up there showing the grace and humility and kindness that you showed me and many people in the bristol and warren rhode island area i hope that you your husband your kids are living through your memory and that in the end uh, the impact that you had on the human race through everything that you did the last six years um, is remembered in some way or another so uh, for those of you listening i thank you for getting through this with me um it's it's hard it's hard to think about the end of such a young life at age 36 but um you know to to jenny pru as i knew you uh, may you rest in peace and power wherever it is that you are um, thank you for listening, everybody, and this song is called Here's to the Night. now.